Food Heals Podcast, Episode 25. I believe that all pain, all diseases, all experiences, all suffering is a gift. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. I'm Susie Hardy. And it's... Throwback Throwback Thursday! (laughs) So usually we post interviews from our film, Food Heals, but today we wanted to play an interview that has a lot of heart and meaning for us. Yeah, I was really honored to be on JJ Flazane's Fit to Love podcast a few weeks ago. She's a really amazing interviewer, and I got to go really deep into my experiences. And I just want to thank JJ because every time I get to talk about my past, it really allows me to heal a little bit more. Isn't that amazing? It's like, it's the one thing you really probably don't want to go into because it hurts. But then once you do, it helps clear it, it helps air it out, it helps you accept it more. Absolutely. What you just said is exactly true. It's healing to talk Mm -hmm. about your story, to tell your story. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I can relate. I lost my mom. Yeah. And so I'm sure you know that when you talk about your mom and you talk about your experience, it's empowering and it just heals that situation a little bit more. Absolutely. And it's it's so funny because it's um, you go through stages of like resistance mm-hmm. and then acceptance and then wanting to pretend it doesn't, didn't happen and then forgetting that it ha- it's like, is that my reality now? But then like it's all about coming to accept it and remember the good times with love, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's so true because those phases, I don't know if they go away. I still go through them. Like, Yeah, I don't know if they ever will. Yeah, did this really happen? And, uh, you know, burying it and then accepting it and then being in a loving place and then being in a scared, sad place again. Like, it's it's cyclical. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think you're, you know, doing such a great job of even bringing this to light, you know. When we share our personal experiences, it helps others to deal with theirs, right? They, they know they're not alone. Yeah, I mean, I'm always helped by other people's stories, and so I do hope that by sharing mine that I can help others. I think you are. Thank you. You're welcome. And you are too. Thanks. So the host, JJ Flazanes, she's an empowerment strategist. She is the director of Invisible Fitness and Amazon bestselling author of Fit to Love, How to Get Physically, Emotionally, and Spiritually Fit to Attract the Love of Your Life. Woo! I know. And she's author of Knack Absolute Abs, Routines for a Fit and Firm Core. And she was named Best Personal Trainer in Los Angeles for 2007 by Elite Traveler Magazine. JJ has been featured in many national magazines such as Shape, Fitness, Muscle and Fitness Hers, Elegant Bride, and Women's Health, as well as appeared on NBC, CBS, Fox 11, and KTLA. So thanks to JJ for letting me share my story. And first, before we get to that, our sponsor. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Global Healing Center. You know who they are. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, we love their products. I'm obsessed with their Parfait Visage. My wrinkles are gone, people. Do you see any wrinkles on this face? No, I see no wrinkles, girl. Okay, thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Parfait Visage. (laughs) Yes, so it really is powerful. It's really moisturizing. It's really healing. I love that stuff. And it's beautiful. It's in this gorgeous little jar. It smells yummy. I know. It's a good gift. And so as Food Heals Nation already knows, if if you've been following our podcast, I love stuff that smells good. The Aqua Spirit Spray by Global Healing Center is the bomb. It really is. It smells like the ocean. It's instantly relaxing. You can spray it on yourself. You can spray it on other people. You can spray it in the air. It's phenomenal. You can spray it on your dogs. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) If they're stinky. (laughs) I've sprayed it on my clothes, too, to make, like, my closet smell good. Yeah. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. So later in the show, we'll tell you how to get a discount on Global Healing Center products. But if you're a frequent listener, you already know what it is. I hope that you are using it to get 20% off. They should be. Yeah. Next up, JJ Flazanes interviews Allison on the Fit to Love podcast on this episode of the Food Heals podcast. The Food Heals podcast starts now. Fit to Love is physical, emotional, and spiritual fitness to achieve the happy life you deserve. From exercise to cooking, 
relationships, and spirituality. You'll find all the inspiration you need right here with our host, JJ Plazane. Hello and welcome to Fit to Love Wellness Wednesdays. Today's show, What Losing My Parents to Cancer Taught Me. We have with us Allison Melody. She is the director of the documentary Food Heals and is the host of the Food Heals podcast. She is a dog-loving entrepreneur with a passion for film, fitness, and food. As a true lover of life and all things, she is dedicated to producing projects and programs that support community building, social causes, and a holistic approach to health and healing. Allison holds a master's degree in spiritual psychology and is the founder of Holistic Voice. Her credentials are evident of her personal calling to find and share new methodologies for health and healing. At the age of 26, Allison endured the devastating loss of both of her parents after their long and challenging battles with cancer. Having witnessed both of her parents' intense and needless suffering, Allison knew she had to dedicate her life toward finding a better way of healing. The tragedy instilled in her an unwavering passion for nutritional medicine and propelled her into the world of holistic health and alternative healing. Welcome to the show, Allison. Thank you, JJ. Thanks for having here. I'm glad to be here. Well, it's a solemn topic to start with, obviously, (laughs) because I can't even imagine. I mean, I could cry thinking about it for myself. (laughs) So I can't even imagine the pain and suffering you've endured and, you know, watching and and so before I well up in tears, let's talk a little bit about some of the details if if you're okay with that. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm at the point where I can share the story without breaking out into tears and I can even share it with laughter. So <laughs> I've done plenty of work on this issue and so I'm happy to share it because I want people to know my story. I want to continue my parents' legacy and help people heal based on the experiences that I've had. You know, this story could help others. So I'm happy to share. How long ago did your parents pass? Um, My father, I believe, was about seven years. My mom was 2004, so uh, 11 years now, which is crazy to me because I can, you know, snap my fingers like it's yesterday and be back there. And what kinds of cancers did they have? My mother's cancer was carcinoma of unknown origin. And what that meant to me at the time was basically they couldn't find the cause. So they would give her a colonoscopy and realize, oh, it's not in the colon. That's not where it originated. And it had just completely taken over her body. So they never knew the origin, which means they didn't have an exact treatment for it. And your dad? My dad had liver cancer. And so, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. He was a drinker and a smoker. I'm not saying that's exactly what caused it, but it didn't help. And prior to their diagnosis, each of them and their health declining, were you on the path of holistic health? Nope. (laughs) What were you doing? What were you doing with your life? I was just living it up, eating fast food. You know, I had no awareness that what I put into my body matters. The only thing I knew was like, oh, you have to exercise that you can be skinny in a bathing suit, right? That is the extent of my knowledge at this time. You know, and I'm talking about myself until my teenage years, until I was about 20. So 20 something years old, that's when I really started to discover it. Unfortunately, I didn't learn anything until after my mother passed away. But in my 20s is really when I started to embrace this holistic lifestyle and realize, oh my goodness, you know, food matters, food heals. And it's the number one thing, you know, mind, body and spirit, it's all it's all connected, but you got to start with the food. And prior to this experience, what were you planning on doing as a career? Because obviously now uh, you're <laughs> you're the director of a documentary called Food Heals, and you're the host of the Food Heals podcast yeah. and founder of the Holistic Voice. So where were, was that the path before this? Originally, I thought I wanted to be in front of the camera, and then I went to film school and realized, no, I want to be behind the camera. I love directing. I love producing. I love editing. I love writing. I love creating a story. And so originally, I wanted to do narrative film, narrative stories, and now I'm obsessed with documentaries, and that's all I do. So, And that's all I do for my clients and for my own personal projects. So tell us who are listening to you. Obviously, it's been, like you said, seven years for your dad, 11 years for your mom. You've told the this, this story. You've done this work. And so what was your first, like, how did you grieve? How did you deal with? How did you process what was going on? Were you, were you on the sidelines sort of watching and just sort of supporting? Were you getting in there and trying to be the rescuer and have them try different things or research things? Was it to, after the fact that then you sort of asked the question of, well, what could have been done that we didn't get to try? Yeah. So with my mom, I was definitely clueless. 
And with my dad, I was definitely like, you're going to drink a green juice every day and you're going to heal yourself and you're going to stop smoking, drinking and eating bad food. Right. So I'll start with my mom. Um, Originally, she had uh, multiple sclerosis. So I grew up with her having that. And what that is, is an autoimmune condition where the immune system is attacking itself. So for her, and I know everyone has different symptoms, but for her, it was in the hands and feet where she would have tingling and pain in her hands and feet. And as I got older, it just got worse. So by the time I was a senior in high school, she was getting more and more debilitated, taking more and more painkillers and pharmaceutical drugs. And then was really catapulted to the next level when I was in college, where she got to the point where first she had to walk with a cane and then she had to, she had a motorized scooter type of wheelchair. And, you know, I have so much shame around this, but I would be embarrassed. Like, mom, why can't you walk? Why can't you do these things? And I think the shame was really about the sadness and the frustration that I wasn't dealing with because no one could help her and the doctors didn't have any answer except for more drugs. And it got to the point where her, her whole day was spent sitting in a chair taking pills. So she had a box of pills And each one had a new side effect. So then there was another pill for that side effect and, you know, so that she wouldn't feel awful all day. But that was her life. And I didn't realize how toxic that life was at the time. The doctors didn't have any answers. There was nothing about nutrition. There was nothing about alternative healing methods such as acupuncture and, you know, things like that. None of that was in our awareness. No one was talking about those things. So when the cancer diagnosis came along, I was absolutely devastated because it was like, how could it get any worse? She's already so debilitated and so miserable. And, you know, she stayed strong for me and tried to pretend she was happy. But I know she was very, very sad and very frustrated that she couldn't work anymore. She couldn't do what she was passionate about. She couldn't play guitar anymore. She used to be a party host. She couldn't host the parties anymore, you know. And so we got the cancer diagnosis, and that was very frustrating, too. But looking back, I can now clearly say that, you know, taking all of those drugs and not eating a healthy diet absolutely contributed to the cancer diagnosis. And I'm not a doctor, but I can say that with complete confidence and clarity that those things affect your body and they make you toxic. And all the pain and suffering she was going through and then getting the cancer diagnosis, it was just so much at once. And so emotionally, I wasn't really dealing with it. It was kind of like my secret life at home. And I wasn't telling my friends about it very much. I'm sure I mentioned it, but it was very like, um, this is just a family thing we're going to go through. So I remember going to all the doctor's appointments. She got chemotherapy, radiation. Uh, she got some sort of experimental surgery and nothing worked. It just made her more miserable to the point where she would be throwing up on the bathroom floor. She lost all of her hair. And this was a woman who had like the long hippie hair that she kept from the 70s because she was that hippie type of person who played guitar on the steps of her college, you know, and watching her lose her hair, I think was the hardest part. Just that visual going through that was really, really tough for me. And it lasted, I would say, about a year and a half to two years. And she passed away one month before my college graduation. That's the hardest time in my life (laughs) at that time. Absolutely. I mean, you're about to step into a whole new chapter of your life and preparing for that. And then on top of that, you've got grieving and the fear probably that set in and then the sadness and probably the anger of all of that, too, I'm sure. And it's funny because I didn't feel those feelings at first. I definitely felt sadness, but I didn't let myself cry. I didn't let out my emotions. I didn't show my emotions to many people. I was very private. I held it all in. I held it all down. I know now that that was unhealthy, and I've done a lot of work on healing that and experiencing those emotions. But to go back to answering your question, uh, a few years later, uh, my father got sick, and um, Things had gotten better for us for a while. My dad had um, met a wonderful woman who I still adore to this day, Dorothy, who became my stepmother, and they got married. And things were looking up for my family. Like, even though I had lost my mom, I had had felt like life was going to be okay because I had my dad, and um, I had graduated college. I had to move to Los Angeles and was starting to pursue my film career. I was working on sets. I was getting clients. I was having a blast. So I felt that that chapter kind of closed and that life was going to be okay. And then to get slapped in the face with the (laughs) new cancer diagnosis of my father, it's just everything. My whole world came crashing down. And I remember getting the call. I had moved from North Carolina to Los Angeles and I got the call and, you know, he just said, I'm sick, baby. It's bad. 
come home. And I was like, is it cancer? And he said, it's cancer. And I knew it. I somehow, when he called me, I knew what he was going to say. It was like the psychic moment because I was starting to become awakened and realize that all these unhealthy habits can contribute to disease. And so I had started to say like quietly, like, dad, you know, maybe you should not smoke so much. Maybe you should not drink so much. And he's kind of like, okay, honey, (laughs) whatever you say, little girl, like not really listening. And so uh, one thing I didn't mention is that when I was in Los Angeles, I had started to meet people. And this was all like, you know, meant to be or whatever, because they would tell me like I took a woman's pregnancy photos and she was like, I had cancer and I healed myself by doing a juice cleanse. And I was like, that's crazy. (laughs) Tell me more. (laughs) And so I started meeting all these people who had healed their bodies. And the common theme was a really holistic approach to health. So instead of doing all these drastic measures such as surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, and popping a bunch of pills, they were doing things like a juice fast or changing their diet so dramatically to only eating plants (laughs) and greens. And that was so powerful that the body was able to repair itself. And so that really got me kind of into this world of holistic health and looking at the body as a whole rather than, you know, cut it out you know, if you cut something out, you know, that's great. You cut out the cancer if it's only in one place. So whatever caused the cancer is still there. So you got to work on the cause. You have to work on the whole body. So I went home, to see my dad with a mission. I was going to cure him. <laughs> so I teamed up with my stepmom, Dorothy, and we would make him liver cleansing juices with garlic and greens. And they tasted absolutely disgusting. <laughs> and we would, <laughs> we would force it down his throat. And, you know, it was, it was comical, you know, he would pretend he was asleep so that he wouldn't have to dr- drink the latest green concoction that we had come up with. And we were reading all these books and we were obsessed. <laughs> Lack of a better word, we were obsessed with greens and juicing. And so everyone that would come over would be served, you know, some green concoction. And I still juice, you know, I'm making fun of myself because we were really obsessed back then, but I still do it to this day. So yes, I did try to change him. I tried very, very hard. We found a doctor in North Carolina and there's very few of these holistic health practitioners, but we found someone and he said, my dad had stage four liver, so things did not look good. All the doctors said, there's nothing we can do except give him radiation and chemo to um, keep him alive a little bit longer, but there's really nothing we can do. So we did do that. But we found this holistic doctor and he said, you know, Lee, my father's name is Lee, you know, Lee, um, I have had cases as severe as yours and doing this program that he has a program, um, they have come back from it. He's never said, I will cure you, so I don't want to misspeak, but he did say, we have had patients with stage four liver, lung, you name it, and they've come back from it. And so that got me on a mission to cure him. And so this was a kind of diet where all you do is juicing and herbs and these, it's really intense. So just as aggressive as chemotherapy and radiation are to the body, it's just as aggressive with the greens and the herbs. So we tried it for maybe a week or two before my dad sat me down and he said, you know what? I appreciate what you're doing, but I don't believe in this. I don't believe it. And you have to let me die with dignity the way I want to die. (laughs) And it was the most, you know, one of the most difficult moments of my life to make the conscious decision. Like you have to let him do what he wants to do and you have to respect him and his avatar and who he is as a person. And that the fact that he wanted to drink and smoke and enjoy his life till his deathbed. And so I had to be okay with that. And that was one of the hardest things I ever did was let go of my, you know, I'm going to heal you. (laughs) Well, bravo to your father for being able to articulate that. There are so many people that act defiantly to their family, whether it be a spouse or a parent or a child, because that's what they want to say is let me have the dignity of doing it my way and not being concerned with pleasing you. Yes. But so many people can't articulate that. And so then it keeps this frustration going. And then pe- then the other person, like that was a gift to you, right? To be able to ha- for have him say that to you so that you could understand and then take responsibility for your strong desires and recognize that while you have those and they're absolutely valid, that's not what he wants. And it's his life yep. and it's his choice. Yes. And, and there's a respect to that. It's like people that 
you know, it's controversial to talk about suicide, but I've had an ex-boyfriend commit suicide. And, and while I know how hard it was in this lifetime for him in the late years of his life when he did it, yes, I was sad. And, but part of me knew that he chose this and all, any other one that passes people or animals usually come to me in dreams anyway. So I already know, I always know they're good and they're okay. And they're, they're still here. They're just not in physical form. Right. They're now non-physical form, but at least at that point, it's like, well, it's your life and you get to decide when you want to yeah. go. It's, I respect that. I can't, what do you want me to do? Say, no, you have to stay for everybody else. That's not, that's codependent. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not, that's not right. That was really very advanced for your dad to be able to speak that clearly to you and, and, and that you got that gift from him so that you didn't think, oh, what else could I have done differently? Because there are so many people who struggle on the emotional side with a parent that whether they take their life or they just go because it's a health related incident or a disease or a chronic condition. And a lot of people feel responsible and they, because nobody spoke up to say, this is my life and I get to make my choice and I get to be responsible for me and you are not. But a lot of people have this, oh, I could have done more. It's my fault. If I only had done this, if I only had done that. And that kind of guilt can cause disease yes. for the people who are left behind. Absolutely. And, you know, I have dealt with that and I've done a lot of work on myself. So, you know, I had to come once he passed away, I had to deal with my grief. And so this grief was compounded because I didn't deal with my mother's with the grief that I should have dealt with from losing my mother. So it was compounded into this double. And, you know, I went very, very dark, you know, very depressed for a little bit. And luckily, it didn't last long because I was able to pull myself out of it. But it's an ongoing battle learning how to let go of the guilt surrounding that, let go of the anger that you didn't try harder or you didn't do better and all that kind of stuff. It, it It's really hard and it takes a lot of self-care and acknowledging and forgiveness and therapy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I see that you have a master's degree in spiritual psychology. So did you get that because of these situations? I have a master's degree <laughs> in self-forgiveness. Yes, because that's why I went, that's why I pursued that. I never would have pursued this if I hadn't been through something so traumatic and so tragic because I needed the tools to deal with my, my feelings and my hurt and my sadness and my anger. And, you know, that school really really gave that to me. And, you know, it was a two year program, but I'm still doing it. I'm still working on it. I'm still working on this avatar and strengthening my own core and making myself happy day to day. I think it's part of all of our expansion evolution anyway. It's either you're doing it and you're aware of it or you're not doing it and you're suppressing yes. it. Either way, your life, your manifesting situations and you've chosen, I believe, all these contracts in your lifetime to grow. And so if you don't believe in that, it's still going to happen and you just may resist it, which that in itself will also cause disease and discord and chronic issues in your life, I think. So I agree with you 100 percent. And in terms of that, it's an everyday thing for everybody. And it's like it's like exercise. I like to tell people you don't just go to the gym for one week and think and do, you know, change your diet for one week and you're going to reverse the effects of, of 20 to 30 years. It's going to take a little bit longer. And the same thing with spiritual practices or emotional awareness and consciousness and mindfulness. This is stuff that you start to learn and start to practice. And the more you practice, the better you get at it and the second nature it becomes, but it never just happens. <laughs> it's not just like a, Oh, I'm a, conscious, spiritual centered being who knows how to deal with my emotions and process everything perfectly fine all the time. No, that's not. How yeah, exactly. And I know everyone says this, but it's so true, including Aerosmith. But life is a journey, not a destination. It is what you're doing on a daily basis, what you're doing regularly that shapes who you are and who you're going to be. And it's exactly like you just said. And I used to be the suppressor. And now I am the you got to deal with this. And if you don't deal with it, then <laughs> you're going to be miserable. And I, I prefer to be happy. I, I choose joy. <laughs> I choose me, you know. So I have to ask, what is your astrological I'm sign? I'm a Sagittarius. I was going to say. <laughs> oh, why don't I just guess? JJ, I'm like, you sound like a fire sign because you're positive and upbeat and look at the, the what the bright side is. And I have Sag. I'm a Pisces, but I've got Sag all okay, over the place. Gotcha. And that's a very Sag quality that you have. And I have to, and the reason why I want to bring this up and sort of tell people that are listening to this, because it is easier. It doesn't mean it's easy. Let me, let me say that again. 
I'm not saying it's easy for anyone to go through what you've gone through, but for someone who has some Sag in them or some Leo in them or some Aries in them, that can be a uh, fire can help fires movement fires movement forward. And so sometimes that can help. If you are someone who is a water sign, a cancer, a Pisces, a Scorpio, you may f- feel like you're in the muck of the muck of the muck and can't get out. And, and for that person, they need extra help in being able to do things. So there are sort of the way that we come into this world and energies that we're good at and when we're aware of things and 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 also sages are seekers of information and knowledge right so that passion to uncover the truth so to speak right we're truth seekers sagittarians are truth seekers and just to let everyone know that sometimes part of how you energetically show up in this life and then of course your environment that you're raised in sometimes can put you at an advantage or disadvantage for being able to tackle these kinds of things. So knowing how you deal with things is really important so that you can get the right kind of support and the right kind of help. So you have many lessons and this show is way too short for the story and I'm uh, not regretting doing it, but I, I, this show will probably go just a little bit longer, everyone. So I'm sorry because I don't want to cut off all the great things that we're talking about. But Allison, you have at least three and I know many more, but the top three life lessons that you got out of what you went through and now as you are able to look at other people people's lives or in retrospect, the lessons that were so profound for you. I want you to share them with our listeners. But first, we do need to take a break. Food Heals Nation, if you are looking for the highest quality supplements, the most luscious organic skincare, and a brand name that you can trust to be free from toxic chemicals, look no further than the Global Healing Center. I have been using their products for years. Their Parfait Visage face lotion literally makes my skin look younger. And it comes in a beautiful bottle, so it is perfect as a gift as well. And the Oxy Powder Colon Cleanse Capsules are the most powerful detox supplements I have ever use. They get everything out and they don't leave you feeling full or uncomfortable. The mission of the Global Healing Center is to bring back good health, positive thinking, happiness, and love. And they want to help you realize that your body is a self-healing mechanism. Well, I couldn't agree more. So I've teamed up with Dr. Group and the Global Healing Center to bring you a discount exclusive to Food Heals listeners. Go to their website at globalhealingcenter.com, pick out the items you want, and use the discount code FOODHEALS, all one word, for 20% off your purchase, plus free shipping to the U.S. and Canada. 20% off is a great deal, Food Heals Nation. I love their products, and I know you will too. You are listening to the Food Hills Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. Okay, Allison, so what, if you had to narrow it down to the very top three most important lessons that you could impart on everyone listening right now, that if they do nothing else, if they just pay attention to these three things, life is good. Absolutely. And like you said, there are plenty more than three, but you know, I'll try to (laughs) narrow it down. The first one that was a huge lesson for me and can definitely help others is you got to let go. So what does that mean? You have to let go of your attachment to the pain. So a lot of times we go through experiences and they become a part of us. And I would never take that away from anyone or even suggest that. But what you have to let go of is all the judgments that you've held for so long about yourself, about the situation, about other people involved, because that's toxic. And what do we know about being toxic or toxins? they keep us sick, they keep us down. So you hear a lot about the environmental toxins and the toxins in our food, but it's also, are you toxic within yourself? Are you living a toxic life? Are you having these toxic thoughts? And those are gonna cause disease and those are gonna make you unhappy and those are gonna come out in every way, other ways. So it's about letting go, letting go of all the anger, all the pain, all the judgments. And when you feel that anger or you feel that pain, experience it, give it a voice, write it down, throw something. I mean, don't break anything, okay? But (laughs) throw a pillow, beat a pillow, beat out that anger, let out the energy. And that allows the healing energy to come in. So number one is let go. I couldn't agree more. That's why I have a six day week show (laughs) because this, this, this show could have gone on a Freedom Friday or even on a thoughtful Thursday, because Thursday is about the psychology and the mindset and the strategy and the hypnotherapy part of this and our subconscious mind. And Friday is Freedom Friday is everything from spirituality. I mean, we've already mentioned astrology and that goes on a Friday, but it really is that emotional piece. I love that you said that there's a point in which the judgment that you 
put on everybody else around you is toxic. Some people are on one level, they're they're clean. They eat very, very cleanly. Everything is the soup the best you can get. Yet on the emotional side, full of anger, resentment, judgment, fear. And I have told people in my belief of law of attraction, which one's better? I mean, it's better to not have any anger and, and let that all go too. But really, it's the person who's filled with all that rage. If You, you can eat a clean diet, but you're still going to create toxicity in your body. Absolutely. I completely agree, just like you said. And you know, if you want to go, my next tip will definitely be a wellness Wednesday and go back to the food because I think that is so important. I think I said at the beginning, like food is number one, but my second tip is wellness is the number one priority at all times. So we've talked about letting go of the toxic emotions, but also what are you putting in your body every day? How are you fueling your system? Because it's the, the old mantra is absolutely true. You are what you eat. And I think Michael Pollan said, you are what you eat eats. So are you eating animal products that are fed a corn GMO laden diet or are you eating plant food that is in its fullest, healthiest form? And that's going to fuel you to either way, feeling bad and feeling awful if you're eating bad food or feeling wonderful and feeling energetic if you're eating, you know, this plant based diet. And so I definitely promote a more plant based vegan diet, but I know it's not for everyone. And, you know, I've gone super extreme into raw food. I've come super back. And so it's not about being extreme. It's about finding the balance of what what works for you and eating more green. So I do a juice every day. I do a smoothie every day. And sometimes I do <laughs> two to three juices a day if I'm feeling super down because I want that plant fuel. I want that energy. I want all those vegetables in my body because they have antioxidants and antioxidants can get rid of cancer cells. And I don't want cancer. Both my parents had cancer. So I'm determined not to get it. Okay. And number three, I believe that all pain, all diseases, all experiences all suffering is a gift. And I know that's hard to hear, especially if you're going through something right now, or you just got diagnosed with something, or a loved one is going through something, or you're very angry with someone. It's really hard to hear that it's a gift. Why is it a gift? It's an opportunity to transform, to change what is not working, right? And you have to use all your experiences as a gift to the world. So you have to share your lessons and knowledge with others. If you don't do that, what is the point of the experience, right? How can you transform that experience into something positive, into something good? And I guarantee you one day you'll be able to look back at the experience and say, wow, that was the best thing that ever happened because it made me with the person I am today, even if you wouldn't have had it happen that way. And then how are you using that pain or that anger or whatever as an artist, because we're all artists in this world. I'm not talking about you don't have to be a painter, but I actually have a really good quote that I love that I just heard on like a <laughs> Oprah Super Soul Sunday or something online, but um, it's from Billy Bob Thornton. And he's an actor, a director, and he's very talented. And he said, as an artist, that's where a lot of your stuff comes from. And he's talking about the pain. You keep honoring these people forever by singing that song or writing that movie or doing that part in a movie or writing a book or whatever it is, because that has a sadness or a melancholy or fear in it. And those are the things that keep them alive. So in the case of losing a loved one, how are you keeping them alive? And so for me, it's doing the film. I'm doing the film Food Heals in honor of my mom and my dad and to help others realize that there are alternative methods to heal from cancer and that diet is number one. It's so important. So you're saving lives because you've lost some. I love that sentiment. I can't claim to save lives, but yes, I would love to help people. And I know you wouldn't be saying that. And, and no one really wants to say, like, I've saved someone's life necessarily. But really, I mean, the, it's the fuel in the mission is so big and it was propelled from the pain, yes. but it's going to help so many people and it already has helped people. I saw your trailer. It's thank great. You. And so when it comes out, you're going to get the letters. You're going to get the people that say, thank you so much for this. It saved my life. You know, it's going to happen and it's, it's only happening. It's not only happening, but it's happening because of what you've had to go through to get to this place. And so it's that cycle of life and the contribution of the pain to how you then like you said, leverage that back out into make it into a beautiful thing. What, what, what happens because of that yeah, pain? Yeah, absolutely. And I do get emails and I do get tweets and things like that. And people are saying thank you just because of my work with my podcast, which, you know, I have the Food Heals podcast and then also my work on my website, Holistic Voice. And people say, oh, I want to hear more. Oh, this really helped me. And like that is so gratifying to me because I know that my mission is important and I know that it's helping people. So it's just like you said. So tell everyone all the links 
for Allison's show, her documentary, and her website will be on the show notes page at fittolove.tv. But tell everybody where else you can find everything. Sure. So Food Heals. Yeah, yeah. Um, Food Heals. You can watch the trailer at foodheals.tv. I have Holistic Voice where I share stories of people that have healed themselves without drug surgery or chemotherapy. Not saying those things are bad. It's just an alternative way or a complementary way of uh, things you can do. And then I have the Food Heals podcast, uh, which our website is foodhealsnation.com. And I'm all over social media. You can follow us at Food Heals Nation. You can follow us at Holistic Voice. You can follow us at Food Heals Film on every single platform. So come on over to fittolove.tv and you'll have a link to all of them and figure out which one is the best, if not all of them, for you to click on so that you can get more information about watching the documentary Food Heals when it comes yes. out, when it's done, and to listen to Allison's show. She and her co-host are hilarious. Thank you. I can't wait to be on your show, yes, too. Yes, we're going to have but, you on, but I can't wait to have you on. I'm so excited. It'll be really fun to be in the studio, but we're going to have you back because now that we've covered all this stuff about going more plant-based diets and to wellness and to juice cleanses, we are going to talk about a juice cleanse. So we're going to have Allison back. So make sure to watch fittolove.tv and figure out when Allison's coming back on and you'll see her show. It'll be on another Wellness Wednesday. Allison, thank you so much. I'm sure that this story is not necessarily the funnest thing to repeat, but even, even with all the work, but I do really appreciate that it's something that you're willing to share because it is going to change lives. Thank you, JJ. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Okay. That's our show. Thanks so much for listening. And thank you to JJ for having me on her show. I had a really good time. I really appreciated getting to tell my story. Check out JJ's show, Fit to Love, Six days a week she puts out episodes. This girl is a hustler and a rock star, and the content is great. So definitely check that out. Today's tweetable is food matters, food heals, and it's the number one thing. If you like that, tweet it to us at Food Heals Nation and use the hashtag Food Heals Podcast so we can see your posts. We'll see you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat in this dress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately.